everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Karen and Tops. I'm your host, Karen and Hines, film critic and journalist. And this is the podcast where I talk to film creatives about their work, the industry, and what inspires them. And today I'm joined by producer Jonas Lambeck to talk about a new short film, Almost Home, which I think a uh, bit for me, I actually kind of related to a lot. And for anyone who watches this, um, I think it will be surprising what the topics that are um, dealt with in the film. And Again, I, this is one of those instances where I'm always surprised by what a film is about. Like I was with an expectation and then I always get surprised, pleasantly surprised. And I can't wait to talk about everything with Jonas about this film because it's very interesting. So it's about this 17 year old um, Jacob who is living on a space station with his mom, Nicole. And she's a doctor, a scientist, and he's a 17 year old student. And they're in this spaceship on their way home and then they find out that there um, is a pandemic and um, in the times that we're living in this is something that everyone around the globe can relate to but it also I think um, I think this is the first film that I've watched since the pandemic has begun and films that do feature our um, stories about the pandemic where the, pers- the protagonist one of the leads is disabled and uh, me being um, having multiple sclerosis and having and being immunocompromised actually related a lot to um, to to um, Jacob in a sense. So we'll get into that. But first, thank you, Jacob um, Jonas, so much for joining me today. Um, as usual, I like to have my guests say a bit about themselves and what got them into filmmaking. So um, I'd just like you to introduce yourself and speak about what, how you became a film producer. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for having us. Uh, first of all, very happy to to be here and talk about the almost home and about um, yeah about filmmaking uh, in general and how I see it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a producer. I'm the producer of, of uh, Almost Home, which is now Oscar shortlisted and such an honor that it <laughs> that it is. And um, I got how did I get into filmmaking? Like um, I studied at the film school in Munich. That's where I met Niels, the director of Almost Home. That's uh, where he pitched me the project for the very, very first time because it's a, it's a student project. And two years ago, and that's when we started producing Almost Home, mm-hmm. um, I founded my production company, Lehoff. Uh, it's, ba- it's Munich-based, um, together with uh, two fellow students uh, from, from Munich Film School. And yeah, we do, I would say, our our goal, our vision of filmmaking is to combine a relevant drama with, with great world building. So that's what, what we're going to do and aim for for the next project. And that's what we try to do. Uh, and hopefully the audience here, is, <laughs> as we see it, uh, like uh, what we try to do in Almost Home as well um, in, in, in the short. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Mm, and so how so producing this film, I think even for a short film, this film had to be quite a challenge to produce and just um, to create together because it's, it's, as I mentioned, it's sci-fi and it's set in space. And I do have to say the um, practical um, effects and the VFX and like every, the way how it's put together is very well done. Like it's a very well made film and that you like, they're in a spaceship. So everything that we see is not, man, is not like typical of earth. You know, it's a spaceship and there's the, all of these touches. So like there's that you get this, you get the scenes inferring that they're in um, anti-gravity. Like, you know, there's there's this little yellow ping pong ball with a smiley face floating around. And then um, and it's one of the I think it's probably one of my favorite small touches is um, is he J- Jacob has these little origami cranes and he has them tethered um, to, to hold them down. And I thought that was such a small it's, it's so small, but it's such a detailed um aspect of the film to let you know that this is space they're not in they're not on earth so talk about just like bringing from just beginning with the details of the film and just like putting together a film that's set in space and it's a sci-fi film and like all of the things like with the costuming is very well done set design and vfx so talk about i want to talk about that part first Okay, well, first of all, thank you. That, that means a lot to us that uh, also the audience see it this way or you seeing it this way, because um, as you said, it was it was a kind of a challenge. So I have to admit that was that was a challenge putting all this together, because when Niels, the director and, and writer, pitched me the project for the very very first time, um, I was I was amazed by the concept of you know a put a setting this coming of age story in in space because. For for me, it pretty much elevates the drama in a way that it's it's very 
good, you know, because it's more contained. And, you know, setting a coming of age story or a pandemic related story in, in space um, is on the one hand, you know, um, make it more dramatic. And on the other hand, puts us as far away from COVID and uh, from real political restrictions and all, all that stuff away as possible. So that was, first of all, I, I like the concept. And then the second thought on this was, okay, this is ambitious and it's going to be a challenge because it's a short and it's a short budget. And that means limited resources. So what we did here, and uh, pretty much it's, it's great that you say you love the details, you know, because that's pretty much important uh, for us here because we tried with, with every decision we made on this project, we tried to achieve exactly this, you know, that the audience believes that it's space, you know, and it's a set in space, but on the other hand, don't lose up the focus on the drama and on uh, on the human interaction and on this dilemma the family is facing, you know, this freedom versus security, which I don't know, I would say pretty uh, many of us went through during the pandemic, you know, we all had these questions like, okay, want to be safe or my freedom back, you know, and so that was, that was the challenge and with Every decision we had to we have to uh, made during this uh, process of, of producing it, um, it was always like okay, um, there was never mo spending money or throwing money on a problem was never an option <laughs> in a, in a working in a short budget. You know, you always have to think twice and have to find a creative way of working around. And I, I think that's what we did. Every time, I, every time I discussed it uh, again and again with Niels and with George, the, the DOP, uh, okay, is there a way to, I don't know, find a great way of working around? Uh, I don't know. And then, uh, so what do we really need was basically the question uh, with every decision, with every creative decision, with every decision uh, regarding uh, space scenes or zero gravity scenes um, and, and shots. So yeah, that was our approach to, I don't know, deal with the limited resources but on the other hand make this space setting as uh, yeah beautiful <laughs> and polished as po possible mm. no um everyone succeeded like i would have to say kudos to the production department like they all of the details are very well done and i love watching sci-fi films and sci-fi shows like i'm even wearing my arm rose and that t-shirt because i'm a huge fan <laughs> of the expanse <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so like I, I would have to say, congrats to, to you and everyone involved in creating the practical effects, especially the VFX. The VFX are like, I think, like really extremely well done. Like the scene where his dad reaches through and touches his arm—that's so unexpected, but it's just like, well done, well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so one thing to say about VFX because credits go absolutely to 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 one one guy his name is lucas fat and he was the vfx supervisor and he did every single cgi shot on his own so he had a, a sleepless night <laughs> during a whole year of post-production so that was insane and i'm very grateful uh, to have him attached on, on this project because um, yeah, we couldn't afford uh, uh, a studio or a VFX uh, supervisor to to do it, you know. So that's why we uh, asked Lucas, also a fellow student from from Munich, and he was, yeah, I'm I'm going to do this, and um, he worked his ass off, <laughs> so to speak, uh, really to to make things happen. Yeah, we're grateful for that. Yeah, he did it. I think he did. Well, if it's just his one, that makes it even more impressive because like what he did is, I think I would say like big budget level because like the, the graphics like just that scene with his dad and the holographs for that is just like extremely well done that's one of the most uh, impressive things to me about the film so kudos to you lucas well then <laughs> thank you uh, thank you <laughs> um so like you said you like you like of course we have to talk about the fact that this film it i think it does it does it does two very big things i think extremely well with the story where it talks about the relationship of a mother and a son and there's that, just them having, a, I think they have a really good relationship as mother and son. But once it, but once it comes talking to about his health, talking about Jacob's health, that's where you see tension between Nico and, and Jacob because he's 17, year old, 17 years old. He's, a, he's, he's not a legal adult, but he's growing and he's becoming more in his own. And um, 
And as I said, I'm immunocompromised. When the pandemic happened, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was stuck indoors for two years. Like I, and the only time wow. I left, yeah, the only time I left home was to go to doctor's appointments or to walk my dog, or I would take like go to the market, which is like five minutes walk down the down the street. And that was the only time I left home. So I was home for two years and then I got COVID twice. So I was home again. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> in, in isolation. So when the film is talking about isolation and that, especially coming from the perspective of a disabled person, I think um I think Nils and his co-writer Massimilian, I think they did a really good job like getting that sense of frustration that Jacob has because I relate to that a lot. So to, um, I want to talk about that aspect of the film about just the relationship between um, Nico and Jacob where it's like two-dimensional. It's like they have a good rapport, but then once it comes talking to about his health, like everything just like is like very tense. It's like, it's like you can tell there is a battle between her wanting to protect him and also trying not to stifle him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, that, that's an <laughs> impressive story, you know, of, of yourself uh, during a pandemic. Wow. <laughs> that, that's okay. So um, I, I think, so first of all, what we tried, we have to say that we did not want to, um, I don't know, do a comment on, on, on COVID. So that was never our goal while producing it. So that, that's very important to us. I would say we want to pose a broader question about freedom versus security, about how families deal with these questions, you know, and also what is a life uh, worth living it, you know, mm -hmm. that was our more our goal than to, I don't know, comment on political restrictions or, or whatever. So that's quite important. And then um, say, uh, that said, I would say um, that uh, being immunocompromised uh, also, I don't know, uh, make it more not even more dramatic but you know if for for yourself the question means a lot more i would say also during the pandemic as you have experienced as well you know you think decisions also uh more than twice you know and and for 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 the mother you know it's always the ultimate goal to pro protect her son and but and for the 70 year old jacob in our story the last thing he wants is to be stuck <laughs> with his mother mm -hmm. as much as he loves her, you know but being a 17 year old guy you the last thing you want is to be stuck with your mother in a contained spaceship because normally i, I mean during the pandemic I, I don't know but a normal 17 year old when they wants to rebel you know uh, uh, against uh, their their parents they can i don't know jump up the and, and, and flee but that's not that's not possible in space <laughs> no <laughs> yeah in a way so and that was <laughs> that's the special thing about the setting and and i would say um every i would say every single person ha had his own experience mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic um uh, related to to this question and that's what we wanted to achieve actually so that everyone um we want to pose a question and not providing answers uh, with this short. Um, and hopefully that's uh, also what we achieved um, by producing it. We want to, yeah, uh, I don't know, um, ask some question for everyone answer and everyone can answer them uh, by, by their own means. So, yeah. No, for sure. I get the concept of the questions because the thing is like we, like, we can't help but talk about COVID because that's the world that we live in now. And we've been there for going on well, almost three yeah. and a half, four years. But the film, which I think is interesting, the pandemic and like COVID isn't mentioned, the word COVID isn't mentioned, but it mentions a, a flu-like pandemic. And it only happens, that's only addressed closer to the end of the film. Whereas the whole sense of isolation and being confined is actually has nothing to do with the pandemic. It has just to do with with Jacob actually being treated, like his mom takes him to space because like she believes this environment because it's more sterile and it's more controlled and it is a place where he could be, receive healing or treatment for his disability and I think the whole idea of freedom versus confinement is I think actually smartly addressed in that while on earth he was he, like he's disabled and he has an autoimmune disease and he has a genetic disease that was of, I, I assumed it was def, um, affecting his bones so I was thinking something like um like spina bifida or something like that, or like MS, because MS, like it does affect your um, mobility. And while on earth, he was in a wheelchair, but he was still more free. 
you know yeah he, yeah he's confined to a wheelchair but he's more free he he's able to go around his friends he has a girlfriend that he likes and like they're able to explore the forest and all of that stuff but what but in space he's walking he's using um he's using um crutches he's using he's exercising he's being rehabilitated but he's still more confined than he ever was on uh, space so i like that dichotomy in the story yeah that, that's all exactly what, what i meant was saying he has his own um experience about freedom because on earth as you said he's not able to walk but he can uh meet his love interest meet his girlfriend you know go to parties um i don't know so is this the freedom he wants or the life which you think is is worth living it or being more yeah secure when it comes to his um uh, uh disabilities and to his uh, immune sickness uh but being you know in this contained spaceship with his mother so it's also kind of a freedom because he i don't know is so that, that that's hard to answer and that's what we want to achieve like everybody has his own i don't know opinion on that um i guess so yeah i like films like this that for the audience especially makes audiences think and i think for people who aren't disabled or maybe even don't have anyone disabled in their life to think about how disabled people see themselves or how we see ourselves because a lot of people will look at someone like Jake in a wheelchair and think his life his life is pitiful and like you think oh you were confined to a wheelchair like you can't do this and like no like being disabled doesn't stop you from living life you know yeah. and and like the film does i think i i think it should or if people are really paying attention be able to also think about their prejudices because that uh, that happens with um Jacob's parents um with um Nico and Tom where Nick um Tom wants him to be more free he doesn't see his disability as a restriction he's like I want you to be able to do this yeah. whereas Nico I think she's seeing it not only from the perspective of, of a mother but she's looking at it from a very medical perspective she's not thinking of the emotional aspect Yeah yeah that's that's right and also we wanted to like um when it comes to our characters as you said Nico is a doctor she uh, she's a scientist you know uh and she is from that perspective very rational about about things and about decisions and that's what we also wanted to achieve to have this different characters so in parents Nico and Tom with their i don't know uh, opinion on 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 this decision and um yeah so that's uh, good to hear to that you say that that you also i don't know um see it that way yeah and i don't know if you can answer me um you should be able to answer this so i what i noticed about the film um with talking about tom and nico is for tom his background is always nature he's um he has the trees and the sounds of the birds um behind him that's his background for his avatar for his holograms whereas for whenever we get the shots in eco everything is off there in the spaceship so everything is always the the spaceship so it's like you have again you have a kind of like this dichotomy or this opposite for for the whole concept of freedom versus confinement or you know so like it it, it plays out very well visually so talk a bit about that with you as a producer and then working with with Lucas your v, the VFX supervisor and also with the set designers like figuring out how to portray these opposites visually for the audience. Yeah. So that was also a part of the concept, you know, to have uh Tom uh and Earth really represents this one uh kind of array of living uh, freely or of freedom, you know. That was that was to really we tried to really I don't know make this as uh opposite as possible. Um because for us it was uh, quite important that uh talking to tom and uh, remembering um uh, i don't know life of his girlfriend is really is is his dream and it's really you know he's close to that this dream uh, will come true you know he's as close as he can be and then this pandemic hits earth so there was carlos concept to really also the scenes in the, in the very beginning you know when they're at, at the lake Mm-hmm. that was uh, quite important and we uh, put a lot of uh, uh, effort into it to shoot this as um uh yeah emotional as possible you know uh, and make it uh, really um regarding the colors and and so on so that was really um, we really put a lot of effort into that and then on the other hand um this the spaceship it 
I, w- I wouldn't necessarily say that the plan was to do is as uh, clean or polished as possible. It also, uh, for us, also the pace, uh, spaceship is contained, but it also should be cozy, you know, because it is also kind of a home. And also for him, in the end, it's the home for the next probably two years, three years. We don't know when he's ever be able, when he's ever be able to return to Earth. So, um, so that was uh, part of the concept, you know, to make it as op- opposite as possible, but both uh, could be his potential home, you know, Tom on also the spaceship. So, yeah. Mm. And um, like talking about the beginning of the film, the scenes were at the lake. So this is, I, I, I love like picking up on little details. That's kind of one of my things. Like I always pay attention to like small details. And like one of the things is like the film opens with um, Jacob, he, like he's learning Japanese and he's reciting these words in Japanese. And they're all words to, with, to do with nature, you know, like sun, wind, you know, um, trees. And again, that's kind of like inferring or even like his subconscious of everything that he that he thinks about his home is about nature you know like his subconscious is longing for nature and there's this song that plays and the song references that the song references saying goodbye to, to the sun saying goodbye to sunsets and like holding um a lover's hand so talk a bit about like we talked about working with lucas so talk about working with the musician who's the musician that you had to write this song for the film and like how it ties into the whole theme of the film yeah, so the musician, uh, his name is Hans Koenigke. So he's um, also from, from Munich. And you got I everyone. Think, like, that's the best yeah. thing going to a film school. Like, get everyone from the film school to take part. <laughs> yeah, Hans is not from the film school. But he's, well, he's also from, from, okay. from, uh, from a city from, uh, from Munich. Um, yeah, so it's uh, pretty much Munich crew. <laughs> and uh, so also the goal was also, I don't know, when it comes to music, um, to have this representation of uh, what means uh, home uh, for for Jacob, or uh, what what does freedom mean? So that was also the goal here to I don't know, um, um, yeah, feature that in 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 the music. And as you said, like uh, nature and freedom and um, I don't know, and and love and all, all those ex- aspects are what um earth um means to 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 jacob um and the spaceship is kind of an opposite but not at all because it's also um his home uh and it was his home um so yeah but also in the music we try to achieve this Mm. so um so when you're as a producer one of your jobs is to like get air like be involved in almost every aspect of the filmmaking that includes working with and with Niels to get the cast. So like, how did you guys find um, Suzanne Wolf, who plays Nico and Jeremiah Meyer, Meyer to play um, Jacob? Like, I think they have, a, I think they, were, they did extremely well and they, they, they conveyed a lot for their characters. Like there's the frustration and the worry that um, Nico has as a mother, but then as um, Jacob, like Jeremiah, I think did a really good job as like portraying as I said, uh, me being disabled and have and being immunocompromised, I related a lot to him. So I think he did a very, a really, really good job conveying a lot of things that I myself was feeling during the pandemic. And just or even just being a disabled person, where you just want to be seen as yourself and you don't want to, your disability to define you, even though it does in some ways. So talk about like the casting process and settling on Jer- on um, Susanna Jeremiah. Yeah. So. First of all, um, very grateful for the cast uh, we were able to uh, attach because uh, Susanna is a uh, quite well-known actress here in Germany. She is a German Film Prize uh, winner. Um, so with Stux, uh, there was uh, a movie um, uh, where she uh, won the uh, Film Prize with. And actually, like when it comes to the casting process, I would say it was not uh you know uh classic uh casting process is it was more like writing love letters to <laughs> to the <laughs> actors or to the actress Susanne um where we i don't know um uh yeah where we wrote why she would be the very best for for uh, playing Nico and uh, it was pretty much like like that because we we saw her in in Stux and we and that's also that um, in Stux she's on a ship on a on a, a sailing uh, a, a ship you know uh and that was why we fought and we liked her performance a lot and that's why i thought okay she's the perfect fit for for playing uh nico and um yeah also with stefan uh Kampert, who stared in dark 
um, the the father. Um, <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> much the same. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. seen Dar, so I was like, I knew he looked familiar. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it was pretty much the same. We, we I don't know, um, was like writing in a love letter and say, hey. <laughs> um do you want to i don't know uh, um be part of the project and start in, in almost home so um yeah that, that was the casting process so there was no real casting process we were pretty much convinced that this is the very best fit and then we were happy to attach them you know mm, and i guess it being a short film definitely helped because they don't have to like commit like months like three four or five months of filming um yeah. doing that and, and in speaking about that how long did filming last so we had uh, elf, uh, elf, <laughs> 11 principal uh, shooting days <laughs> and one shooting day at the lake. So that was half shooting day at, at the lake, I would say, not part of the principal shoot. So, um, and we were not, we couldn't afford a proper stage, you know, how, where we could build the spaceship in and, and, and shoot. So uh, we rented an old hall in Munich that was before used by the wastewater management. Mm -hmm. So uh, the smell was <laughs> kind of an issue <laughs> during the shoot. That's why I said we were very lucky to attach these, uh, these cast because they also, <laughs> and it was also part of the project, you know, because there wasn't a lot of money and not a lot of budget. <laughs> and they, but they, you know, they took it as it was. So, um, uh, and yeah, so the 11 uh, days of uh, shooting in this old hall in Munich and before we build up this spaceship, I would say for eight weeks, something like that, three months in total. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's actually pretty impressive again for like that length of time, especially as I said, for the ship is very, for what we see of the ship and what I know would have been like practically fast, like the, um, like the chairs that they're sitting and like the different things that they have to sit on, like the, the machines and even crutch, the, even the crutches that um, Jacob used. I have to, I was, I, I told myself, I have to ask about these crutches because those aren't actual, I, I don't know. I don't know if maybe they are real, the real type of crutches sold in Germany. Are they, or were they made specially for the film? Like the design, because the design isn't typical. Uh, for what crutches do you mean? Like, for the crutches uh, that Jacob uses, the ones that attach to his arm and that he uses to add. Ah. Uh, uh, you know, no, they are, I would say, uh, the thing about, no, they were, uh, was made uh, special for the, for the movie, yeah, for, the, for the film. Whoever made those should get those uh, prototypes. Because <laughs> <laughs> they look, no, they look cool, but they also look very functional, more functional and more, uh, more comfortable than the typical crutches that people use. So, how can you yeah. Like? <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah i will remember <laughs> right um so like we're talking about the film at the con and like we talk again about freedom so for you personally did your ideas of what freedom is and what freedom could be in with regards to like not only your health but just like your ability to be able to do what you want and really and, and let me see what's the word i'm looking for and redefining relationships in your life did that change before or um, during filming, because like, again, like you, this film was made with, during the first two years of the pandemic and so much things, a lot of people had to redefine a lot of things in their life, like priorities shifted, like people had to realize, okay, this, like a lot of people changed careers because they were like, life is short, you know, and like, this is what I really want to do. And like for you during the filming and like, in years, like was there anything for you that shifted or that you had to re reprioritize or you had to rethink? while you were filming that the film made you think about that you didn't think about before. Did I make that clear? I think I kind of jumbled that up. Yeah, I think you did. So to be very honest, during the during the shoot, I was not thinking about <laughs> these uh, questions at all because I was totally busy, busy with, with, with this <laughs> project. But uh, after that, I, I, I would say it pretty much uh, shifted, you know, uh, I, I would say, uh, well, for me, it became very clear that every single person, every individual has his very own uh, perception of, of freedom, you know, and what is, does it mean freedom to, to, to them? Um, so um, that I would say that that shifted because before I was like, okay. And, and you mentioned that as a disabled person, it, it may be completely different, you know, from, I don't know, from being not a disabled person, what, what freedom means. So, um, I would say that that shifted in a way that uh, for me it became very clear, so crystal clear. Okay, it's totally different to 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 everybody, and that that's okay, and that, that's a good thing. Um, I would say um, to 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 remember. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Freedom is very um is is very individual. Like I live with my twin sister, and like she's not disabled like me, 
but she um but she had to learn how to adapt her, yeah. her her way of doing things for me like whenever we go we have she has to wear a mask i wear a mask but she had to learn how to adapt to to make to, to make things safe for me but then she also had to she she her um she became more free in a sense that she began working from home too like for a lot of companies they had to figure out how their employees would work and like even now where things are relatively more safe and like I'm, from a lot of people things have gone back to normal she still works from home most of the time like she works from home two days um two days and like goes back into the office three days and like she's more relaxed at home rather than than, yeah. than than she was before you know like before she was always stressed like suddenly she called me and she would carry i'm so stressed and stuff but she doesn't do that now because while she's home she has to work regular nine to five hours but she can she's able to relax more she can take a break you know turn on the tv and watch something during her break or go take a walk and like for her she's more free now than she was before yeah and i think that's that's the same for for many people you know uh like with all these uh, topics like remote work or uh, working from home you know that's something for for many people that means uh you know uh, having more freedom you know and i think that that's great and, and for other people maybe the, the uh, it's you know they feel more free when they i don't know um can can leave their their house every mm-hmm. single day and i don't know be be on travel and or commuting or <laughs> i don't know so maybe that's their way of of, of um of, of living uh, their life or uh, working or whatever and that's uh, that's that's okay <laughs> yeah no for sure like i got a dog and she makes me go outside like she's here sleeping like eh. she's sleeping uh-huh. and i'm like she gets me out of the house <laughs> right so i totally get yeah. it um and like we're gonna wrap up soon because i know you say you only had a certain amount of time like but free um um now that you've done this project and it's shortlisted for an oscar um but what does that mean for you and the team because i know like it's abstractly i know it's like a big deal but still for you personally what does that mean for you not only for the project but for you as a producer and as for someone to have had this happen so relatively um new within your career because you said that neil's presented this to you while you were um, students right yeah. yeah that's right so first of all it's a huge honor to be shortlisted among these other great filmmakers you know and um yeah it's for me personally, it, it means a lot because it is. Um, uh, it was the fir- very first project I uh, I worked on, uh, also with Niels together. Not the first project I worked on, but uh, when I founded my company two years ago, that was the first project we uh, engaged in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and also um, at this time, I was a student at, at film school, and and so it was kind of the first really big big project you know and in the two years there yeah, there was happening a lot but you know from uh, so there was this project I mean, means a lot to me personally uh, because it was so ambitious with with the small budget to set uh, things up and then there was this amazing team you know who all gave a lot for this project it was really a lot and so many people i don't know had sleepless nights and and but we had a common vision i would say we all had this common vision okay if we are able to finish this project there could be probably be a great outcome and a, a great film you know and I'm, I'm 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 so honored to receive feedback that um this film touches people emotionally and uh, it says something to them and that they can relate to it, so that 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 means a lot. Uh, and also, you know, um, being shortlisted for 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 the Oscar now is like that's a that's a great reward for for I don't know all this effort we put in, into this movie. And we are for the next project, Niels and I, are uh, uh, developing together at the moment. I think we aim for the same thing, you know, to combine this deeply human stories with great world building and to make it in that way entertaining but you know in, in the end it's a coming of age story or it's a story about family or i don't know what what story but you know that's what we're aiming for for the next project so that's the big goal and um also working together with Niels is is great because we share the, the same vision here and uh, during this project we really i don't know uh found our way you know of, of working together um as a creative duo i would say and that's what I'm grateful for. So 
um, yeah, just like, enjoying I, I, enjoying it. <laughs> no, enjoy every bit of it. Like, you guys have earned it and you deserved it. And like I was going to ask you what your next project was going to be. Do you guys are are you already working on a project? Like, is there already a finished script or um, screenplay um, in that you guys are already beginning to like develop or like the first steps of like of like producing it? Yeah, I would say there are uh, several projects and uh, one I would say is um, we, we're going to announce it. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, so we are working on, on a, almost on the feature, for example. So that's what we're definitely working on. Want to um, yeah extend this um, this short. Um, but as I said, you know, the, the way we think about filmmaking is exactly this, you know, to, to, to have these stories, to have these relatable characters. But then also, I don't know, um, combine it with great world building and to set it in an interesting world you want to discover or, and to make it also entertaining, but on the other hand, never lose this, I don't know, deeply human story in it. Mm. Um, and so once the film has finished, once Almost Home has finished, I guess you could say with the festival circuit, and that usually ends with, um, with the Oscars. Um, is it, are you looking to have it platformed on any sites? Because I know there's Dusk. Um, usually platforms a lot of um, independent sci-fi films and I've done a few interviews for a couple of them so are you looking for it to be platformed anywhere uh, yeah we definitely I don't know we have some uh, I don't know discussions um, about that at the moment and to have some uh, potential partners uh, we're talking to um, so yeah uh, let's see we're definitely looking for for a platform and yeah as you said we are for us it's not the end of the festival circuit it's a more <laughs> like the beginning because the film was finished in uh, July uh, mm. yeah, July, uh, yeah um, last year so it's pretty new um, so um, yeah let's see what, what happens yeah um, like again congrats to you and the team and everyone who worked on this film like you guys deserve everything you did a fantastic job be proud of yourself <laughs> well thank you very much and also thanks for having us well, Pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> so, everyone, that was another episode of Karen and Talks, and today I was joined by producer Jonas Lembeck to talk about the sharp film Almost Home, which was directed by Niels Keller and written by Keller and Maximilian Rickard. I, I absolutely love this film. It's actually my first uh, short film. No, Emma. It's one of my first short films for 2023, and I think it's a great way to start the year, you know, like watching all of these amazing films. And it's a sci-fi short. It's um, about 23 minutes long, so it's not a full half hour, but it, I think it gets so much across in such, in that, such a short space of time. As I said, I'm very, I was very impressed by the acting and the storytelling and the VFX. The VFX, I think, are amazing. Um, so again, kudos to everyone involved, and I appreciate Jonas taking the time to talk to me about the film and about his perspective on the film and as a creative and as a producer on it. And as I'll add links to the film's website and to Jonas's and Neil's websites as well in the description box. And you can find, and I will do that as well for the YouTube channel. So if you want to watch this in video format, you can go to my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Carolyn underscore Heinz. That's H-I-N-D as in David S., and it will be there in video format. And if you go in the description box for the video, you'll find um, active links for all of the websites in, um, involved with the film. And um, you can find other episodes of Carolyn Talks on my YouTube channel, as well as on podcasts, if you're, you're obviously listening to podcasts. And my other podcast, so here's what happened, that I post with my friend, Lenisha, that's where we talk about films, TV, books, manga, and all forms of entertainment media. And that's a monthly podcast. So that every month you can find new episodes and you can go back and watch our old episodes for 2022, 2021, 20, um, 20. We've been doing this since 2018. Our very first episode, we talked about the Avengers Endgame. We've been having an amazing time doing those. So I have to always like thank Lanisha for doing that web, that podcast with me because it's been so great working with her and just you know, talking about films and TV shows from a Black Nerdy Girl perspective. And um, you can find episodes of my, of Karen and Talks with the Africa Virtual Round Tables on my YouTube channel as well. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Carrie CNH12. That's at C-A-R-R-I-E CNH12. You can find um, my, all of my published work as well as links to the podcast and YouTube channel on my R3 page. So that's where all of my published work is housed. So that's R3, A-U-T-H-O-R-Y dot com slash carolyn hines 
and you can find all of my work there. Just search and you can find interviews that I've done with film creatives like Jonas, directors, writers, actors, cinematographers, composers there as well. And um, I think I'm going to wrap up. So this is going to be actually one of my first podcast episodes for 2023. And if you're a new listener to my podcast, thank you for listening. And if you're a, if you're a veteran podcast listener, thank you so much for, for always stay, sticking by my side and listening t- to my interviews. I appreciate everyone who takes the time to listen to me and as well. If you have, so you can, as I said, follow me on Twitter where you can find me like tweeting um, films and TV shows for Saturday night site. My, me and my cause, we host a like, tweet session every Saturday at 10 Eastern where we do films and TV shows from around the world as long as they have a site by aspect. <laughs> um, and until the next episode of Karen and Talks, everyone, stay safe. Mm-hmm.